here with Anabaptist Perspectives. My name is Steve Russell, and I'm going to be talking with Kyle Stolzfus. Both of us work at Faith Builders. Uh, both of us are instructors there, and Kyle also is the academic dean. And today, Kyle wants to talk about a legacy that is larger than oneself. And I want to read um, a little uh, blurb that he had written. This is about benefiting from, appreciating, and participating in a cultural legacy lar larger than oneself. The central burden is that we're recipients of spiritual and moral wealth. We can respond in a variety of ways to this, indulgently, critically, or constructively. So, um, we're going to talk about, or you're going to talk about, um, uh, tradition, pretty much, and, and is yeah. part of a big part of it, and uh, tradition in general. But for us, what's really interesting or important is um, the Bible and church. So, what would you say um, about uh, uh, scri um, tradition in Scripture? Let's start there because that is so important to us. Yeah. Oh, what what I found just a kind of opening comment as I as I got ready to talk about these ways of responding to tradition. It's like, well, what do we even mean when we're talking about tradition, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what can we learn from Scripture to kind of get our footing about tradition before I just kind of tally-ho and, and jump mm -hmm. right into it. So, so I'm backing up here a little bit, and it's probably, it's probably going to say enough here to actually span two episodes, so <laughs> bear with me. But uh, to, to do some groundwork, we're going to talk about tradition in Scripture, mm -hmm. and it's there, mm -hmm. and then kind of move forward from, from that. Um, so we'll start, I think, with, with the Old Testament. And, and in the Old Testament, you're finding God. He's, he's creating the world. He's creating his people in some ways, kind of calling them into existence and winning them to himself. Mm -hmm. And he, he gives his people this really rich world to live in of, of meaning and of remembrance mm -hmm. of who he is mm -hmm. as their God and the kind of, of work that he's done on their behalf. Mm -hmm. um, he gives them the Ten Commandments. He, uh, he gives them these repeated stories that they're to remember and to repeat over and over and over to themselves as God's people of, of his deliverance of them and of who they are as his mm -hmm. people, uh, his mm -hmm. special people. He gives them the temple. Um, he gives them Leviticus, which uh, is kind of hard, maybe from our perspective, to really mm -hmm. appreciate. But, mm -hmm. but for a people who come out of slavery, um, he's giving them a fabric of life that actually calls them into existence and, and makes them this kind of peculiar, God-glorifying people. He's, he's, and essentially, he's, he's creating these people by laying in for them a tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the Old Testament is, is about creating this sort of people through the traditions and the stories, the habits, the practices mm -hmm. that make them who they are. And, and this is the work of God in the Old Testament. Um, we can move forward here to, to the New Testament. We, we keep on telling the story of God and his people through scripture. Uh, there's, there's Paul, and this is where I'm going to, to, to slow down and spend some time um, Paul and, and how he discusses what he calls the tradition, say in 2 Thessalonians 2.5 or, or 2.15, he says, to stand firm and hold to the traditions that were taught by us, either by spoken word or by our letter. Mm -hmm. So he, he wants them to hold fast to the tradition. It just awakens the question, well, what's the tradition? Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. the contents of mm -hmm. this? Um, mm -hmm. And why, why does it matter that they hang on to this? And what I'm, what I'm going to suggest here is that when Paul's talking about the tradition, he is talking about the contents of the teaching, which is clear here in 2 mm -hmm. Thessalonians, but he's also talking about practices, mm -hmm. he's talking about forms of worship, mm -hmm. and he's talking about an approach to Scripture, mm -hmm. which would have been the Old Testament the Old at this Testament. point. Mm -hmm. um, and Paul is actually, he's recommending to these people in Thessalonica that they step into this world that makes sense of themselves as people, as God's new creation, uh, what Paul, what, what, sorry, what Jude calls the faith once delivered to all saints. And he wants, he's inviting them into that, to grow and to, and to actually become the kind of people that God wants them to be. Um, the form of worship, 
uh, 2 Timothy 4.13, Paul says there to, uh, to pay attention to the public reading of Scripture. Little unsure exactly what he means there, but he's probably borrowing something from the, the synagogue mm-hmm. style of worship, where mm-hmm. somebody would get up, they would read Scripture, and then there would be some some explanation of what it means, and people would actually work with the text a little bit, and, mm-hmm. and especially they'd be uh, they'd be relating that to how these promises were fulfilled in Christ. The, this and this scripture almost surely is only the Old Testament at that point. Very likely, and, yeah. and there, there'd be some there'd be some circulating epistles, and and there'd be writings that are being circulated there, which which actually runs into some problems after yeah. a little while yeah. here. But they don't yet have what we would call the New Testament. The status, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. The, or they, the, those pieces don't have quite the same status yet. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it was, but that, that's the work of this community is mm-hmm. to come together. They're reading Scripture. Mm-hmm. They're working with it. They're seeing Christ in it, and they're explaining and showing to each other Christ in the written words of mm-hmm. Scripture. Um, so, again, and we're getting there, but the, what they recognized was the interpretive key to, to making sense of Scripture, this Old Testament, uh, which wasn't old yet to yeah. them, the, the, it's, just, it's the Word of God, the key to making sense of that was Christ. Mm-hmm. And, and when Paul is referring to the tradition of interpreting Scripture, he's probably pointing to something like um, well, Philippians 2.6, which I think gets close to the core of what he might mean by this tradition of interpreting Scripture. And that's here is Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. He tells them the story mm-hmm. of Christ and says, if you want to understand Scripture, mm-hmm. you've got to read it through Christ. Mm-hmm. And that's what the Holy Spirit helps us to do. There's, there's, this, there's this form of a king in Scripture, mm-hmm. you could say, and the task of the community is to discern the king in the Scripture they have and, and to point him out to each other. Um, this, this you could say, the, the fancy term, this is the charisma. Mm-hmm. It's, it's that, that attempt to express the message and to see the message of all of Christ's entire ministry in something of a tight economical package and then to read Scripture through that. And th- this is the key to them to understanding what the contents of Scripture are. And also, as these other things start to circulate, these epistles to say, well, that doesn't line up with the form of Christ, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that one needs to be discarded, yes. uh-huh. and this one does. It does. Mm-hmm. It, it's kind of a rule they use to discern which scripture can be accepted as scripture and which needs to be discarded. And you're talking about something, this kerygma, this, this rule uh-huh. that predates the actual New Testament, that it predates, it's, uh, it's, it's more of an oral or an uh, uh, experiential thing that the church has, uh-huh. right? Well, can you say a little more? Well, the reason I'm wondering is, uh, well, what I wanted to ask uh, was um, the, the, uh, the tradition you're talking about, this kerygma, mm-hmm. it, uh, it becomes solidified mm-hmm. in the New Testament, but it also precedes it. Yeah. And I think it's important for us to get that. Yeah. Uh, just so that we recognize when Paul says, uh, be faithful in reading the scriptures, he's not telling us, read my letters. Uh-huh. You know, and, and he's, he's actually, he's dealing with, a, once again, a living thing. Mm-hmm. The, the, the body of knowledge that the church has and, and, the, and the practice it has. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's, I think that's something about, well, it says something about what we as humans are, that we need those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. It's not just a book. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, I'm not putting down the book, obviously, but it's not just the book. It's some kind of living uh, community. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and in that community, when you go back to that, uh, that Philippians passage, mm-hmm. I mentioned what that, I think that highlights here, what Paul is actually putting down for us for the first time mm-hmm. is probably a hymn. I mean, this, yes. is, mm-hmm. this is a form of kind of doxological worship that mm-hmm. these Christian communities are gathering around the form of Christ. And this helps him to remember in that kind of concise way who Christ is. And that's, uh, that's their key to understanding Scripture. But they do that together. Yes. And they do that in a community. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask about uh, what comes after that, especially with the church. But before I do that, um, mm-hmm. is there something about us, do you think, as humans, that requires the habitual, the traditional? Mm-hmm. Or is, is because the reason I'm asking is uh, we moderns uh, think that unless you come up with something totally new, 
um, it's not worth anything. So you've got to you've got to be spontaneous. You've oh. got to be uh, you've got to come up with your own thing, man. And uh, I personally think well, Pascal talks about how we are um, a high percentage of what it means to be a human is wh what's habitual. Mm -hmm. We actually and so I'm wondering, do is there actually something about tradition that we need that mm. actually fits with the category of being human? Mm -hmm. And let's, if there is, then we risk losing something if we throw it all out. That's what yeah. I'm asking. Yeah, well, this is one of the, the first real problems, the significant challenge that the mm -hmm. apostolic church begins to face. You, mm -hmm. you see the roots of Gnosticism. Mm -hmm. and, and while, um, while the, 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 the apostolic church is, is working with texts and they're trying to discern which texts to use in their worship, mm -hmm. Um, the Valentinian Gnostics, anyway, they come along and they go, hey, no, I don't think we need to meet at all, actually. Because <laughs> the, the contents of what this is, is just, it's about me as the spiritual being, being reunified with the spiritual Christ. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not even sure if Christ actually had a body, come to mm -hmm. think of it. So I'm not sure if we need those either. Mm -hmm. So if we don't need our bodies, we don't really need to get together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't, these, these nasty things like practices, well, that's, that's for these kind of lesser Christians, mm -hmm. and that's cute they do that, but mm -hmm. not for us spiritual ones. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't need things like practices yeah. anymore. Yeah. So this is where, this, is where, um, this might be where, where John, uh, 1 John 2.19, he's, you know, he's, he's lamenting, he's saying they went out from among us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's grieving this, these, mm -hmm. these people they left, they may have been Valentinian Gnostics, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, there's Hebrews 10.5, while, while the Orthodox Church here is, again, they're wrestling with what text to use. Uh, he's having to remind them, continue to gather, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we're, we're creatures that need this. <laughs> we mm -hmm. need to be together mm -hmm. habitually. We need to do mm -hmm. this regularly. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, not just, um, we're not just spirits that are accidentally attached to bodies here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're incorporated beings, and we need, we need a community to do this. Mm -hmm. And he has to remind them. So I think early on, there is that challenge that's coming up here. <coughs> well, I think that leads right on to the next uh, issue, which would be, uh, what about in the early church? So mm -hmm. you, you've mentioned, uh, you know, John, what he wrote and what the, was written in the letter to the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. But what happens after the, the canon is uh, fulfilled, the New Testament is finished, and now we have the church and the, the apostles are gone. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, so what, what's, the, what, what's their take on tradition? And, and what I'll be... What I'll be what I'll be highlighting here is is the continuity that's there. Mm. Okay, you can you could uh, maybe especially the, the further you go, you can you can make some some chops there. But I think at this point there's there's a lot of continuity to notice. Mm -hmm. You're seeing the apostolic church here; they're guarding this faith that's once delivered to the saints, and and the church is regarding itself as entrusted with this sacred task of mm -hmm. transmitting this faith mm -hmm. through the discernment of scripture, through these practices, through the, 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 the kind of authority that they've been invested by Christ as his church mm -hmm. to, to take action in the world and, and to, to kind of transmit and move ahead um, the, the work of God in their midst. <coughs> They're the people of God. And... Uh, I think you'll notice that the rule that, that tradition takes as we move into, say, the early church, and I'm thinking um, after, the, after the apostles have, have died and we're moving into the 100s, 200s, 300s, say, um, tradition takes really a similar kind of regulative rule, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, the goal here remains to treasure the inheritance of this faith that's been delivered once mm -hmm. for all the saints. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying there's a lot of continuity here. Mm -hmm. um, they're responding to challenges. There's the challenge of, say, Marcion, who um, he, f he gets kind of queasy about the, who he would see as the God of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Yahweh. Yeah, there's something happening with his people, but He's, he's kind of violent and he's mm -hmm. kind of hard to get along with. He's pretty possessive as a god. And he just doesn't look like, he doesn't look like the god of Jesus. What Marcion says, and this is, um, this is a very clean way to make this division. He says, well, they're not, they're not the same god. Mm -hmm. they, they must be two different gods. Mm -hmm. So he just makes a, a total break between 
uh, the God of the Old Testament, who you'd say is Yahweh, and the God of the New Testament, who he, he, he associates with Jesus. But as the as the church is in the apostolic, or sorry, in the in the early church, as they're responding to Marcion, they're reading through the tradition, and they're saying, "Wait, we're with Paul here. No, same God. There's actually mm -hmm. continuity here, mm -hmm. and they have to reject that." Mm -hmm. um, there's the Valentinian Gnostics we've talked about. They see this this major break between the God of the Old Testament. He's so material. Mm -hmm. He's so earthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just kind of disgusting mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. And they, they want to reject that. And they see Christ as the sort of first fruits of these disembodied spirits. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get to ourselves become the pure rational spirits that were intended to be realized as a spark of divinity in ourselves. And Christ is here to show us that nature, and we'll eventually get to be reunited with him. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the early church, they're also, again, they're reading through the tradition here, and they're saying, well, in the apostolic tradition, there's, there's something more going. God is working with his people through the material as well, and mm -hmm. we can't, he was truly God, he was truly man. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that also falls out of bounds, and they, they reject that as well. So tradition is, again, it's playing this kind of regulative role. Mm -hmm. um, there's, this, there's this image that, that Irenaeus gives, which uh, I think I first heard from you when I was in one of your classes. But he's, he's taking and he's, he's summarizing the work that God has done, the economy of God, you'd say, and the rule of faith. And he, and he takes this, and he makes this image for us of, of reading scripture through the rule of faith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, he says that to, to read scripture right for him is, is to look at the image of a king that's been laid out through careful handiwork of, of God's work. Mm -hmm. It's been laid out, these individual stones have been set. And the stones themselves are, are really beautiful. I mean, there's, there's, there's Moses and the deliverance of the people of Israel from Pharaoh. Uh, there's, there's all of these gemstones. That there's the, the giving of the law, and that's a beautiful and a good thing. But it's, it's not until Christ comes mm -hmm. that you see the fullness of what that image actually mm -hmm. means. Mm -hmm. So you've got to step back a few paces, mm -hmm. and when you read it alongside the tradition, and when you read it alongside Christ with the aid of the Holy Spirit, you step back and there's the mosaic, mm -hmm. there's the whole mm -hmm. thing, and it looks like Christ, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. says. And, and what his response to that is, when you have people like, um, like Marcion, Marcion, like the Valentinians, they mm -hmm. come along and, and they, they take the gems and they're rearranging them, mm -hmm. and you don't have the image of a king anymore, much less it, it just looks like a dog or mm -hmm. like some kind of fox, mm -hmm. and it's, it's not even very good work, he yeah. says. <laughs> so he's reading scripture, alongside the tradition, and mm -hmm. it's allowing him to preserve in his mind the image of the king, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, as opposed to something that's just kind of ugly and distorted, and mm -hmm. you know, the gems might still be there, but they yeah. just don't, they don't go to the same place anymore. And they don't point us in the same yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, you've mentioned uh, uh, several times uh, what we might call opponents, or maybe even heretics, mm -hmm. opponents of Christianity. Um, doesn't this, um, the, the, the traditional thrust, the kerygma, um, doesn't that even help us as fallen humans stay on track? So one of mm. the, one of the, in the early days of the church, there was a lot, uh, the non-Christians had problems with uh, the physical world. That's part of the reason for these heretics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, that's the world they li the, the Christians lived in. And so do you have anything to say about how uh, the kerygma or the uh, tradition also help just, just a Christian keep online uh, and battle any kind of internal uh, problem he might have that might push him off, mm -hmm. off, the, off, his, uh, off the proper path. Do uh -huh. you have anything on that or not? Well, if I, if I hear what you say, like to be, there's a whole tradition of preaching charismatic preaching mm -hmm. that just recognizes that for us as humans to grow in Christ is to be constantly challenged and brought back to mm -hmm. the, the, the message of the gospel, mm -hmm. which is that here is Christ mm -hmm. and 
He comes and he shows us what the fullness of human life is like. Mm -hmm. And he accepts the burden of our sinfulness on himself. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I mean, if, if you're like me, I, I need to be reminded of that very often. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it, this, this is also, it's, it's, it's a way of, yeah, it's a way of showing some boundaries and mm -hmm. seeing like what, what falls off mm -hmm. of what you could consider orthodox faith, what heresy looks like helps us to discern that. Mm -hmm. But it applies also, yeah, within the household of God as yeah. a way of us just growing up in Christ because that, that, line, <laughs> that line extends through us as well. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking too of uh, um, Augustine. He, uh, uh -huh. uh, he, he wasn't, thir he wasn't uh, a Christian until he was 30. Before that, he was um, allured by these Gnostic teachings. Uh -huh. And after he was a Christian, I think he was a bit, uh, still a bit uh, touched by some of that Gnosticism. But the tradition itself uh, kept him from um, rejecting uh, human sexuality. Uh, at first he was pretty negative towards it. A little it. uptight about that. A little bit uptight. Yeah. But, but at the end when he writes his retractions, uh, I think it's pretty clear that he's saying, this is something that's good, God made it, and uh, and, and I think it was that that whole long tradition of this teaching uh -huh. uh, corrected him. Uh, part, part of his need for correction was because he had been open to the Gnostics. Mm. But, uh, but it, the, I think over, it, when he first became a Christian, he wasn't quite corrected, but over time he was. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a really specific observation, I think. Like he's, mm -hmm. there's, there's Plato and there's Platonism. Yes. <laughs> and uh, within, within the world that early Christians are living in, that mm -hmm. impulse, that the insecurity about what to do with materiality mm -hmm. is really real. Mm -hmm. And y you see that being a significant influence right here at the start of Christianity. And in the incarnation <laughs> is the Christian response to that, but it's hard. It's mm -hmm. hard to hold that together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been one of the struggles uh, maybe particularly in the Western Christian tradition is mm -hmm. how to hold that together. Yeah. Um, and it's the charismatic tradition that's just going to insist. Mm -hmm. You've got to hold them together. Got to hold and you've got to remind yourself of that constantly because we, we, we tend mm -hmm. to try to abstract ourselves. I mean, being a material human is just kind of messy. It's inconvenient. <laughs> it's also wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.